You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I am so excited to be here today with Margaret Peterson Haddocks. Hey, Margaret. Hi, Sammy. How are you? I'm so good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Gosh, it's so wonderful to talk to you today, and I know that we're going to talk about some of your books. Your newest one is Falling Out of Time, which you've got there on your screen, and I've got Running Out of Time here on my screen, which is an older book, but Falling Out of Time, is it like a sequel? It is technically not a sequel. We decided not to call it that because it's not exactly a sequel. We call it a companion book because it's kind of a next generation type connection to running out of time. You can read falling out of time without having read running out of time. I, I think I, of course, I always want to recommend for people to read more books. Sure. So it's a great idea to read running out of time first and then falling out of time. But, uh, you know, you do you. <laughs> Got it. I love that. Well, before we hop in any further, just tell us a little bit about yourself and especially your connection to Indiana. Sure. Um, actually, Running Out of Time, we'll start there. That was my very first book, book, and it came out in 1995. And Falling Out of Time, the one that's right here, is my 49th book, which just came out last month. So um, I've been a writer for a very long time. I actually started out, though, working as a journalist. And I grew up in Ohio, but uh, I, I kind of like to joke that the minute I got out of college, I moved to Indiana. Yay. Uh, I worked briefly at the, a newspaper in Fort Wayne as a copy editor. And what I really wanted to do was be a reporter. And so then I moved to Indianapolis to work as a reporter there. And um, that fortunately gave me ideas for a couple books that I wanted to write. And so then I made the transition into writing books full time. So that's kind oh. of the sum up of my life. I now live back in Ohio again. Um, and have lived in other states as well. But I, I feel like Indiana gave me my start as a writer. And oh, that's so wonderful. So we gave you your start, but you probably consider yourself more of an Ohioan. Do you, is that word, do you call yourself a Buckeye or an Ohioan? I, I, I do. I can, I use them interchangeably. Either is fine. Cool. But yeah. I'm honored that Hoosiers, you know, connects to me as well. I got you, Margaret. Mm -hmm. So you said that Falling Out of Time is your 49th book. Mm -hmm. My goodness, is there going to be a 50th? There is. And actually, the 50th is already written. Um, oh, it is a book yay. called The Ghostly Photos, and it will come out in September. That is so exciting. I can't wait to read that. That sounds amazing. You know, 50 books, that's amazing. Where do you feel like you are in your writing journey? And where are you going towards? Well, that's that's always a question I ask. Um, you would think that by the time I've written this many books that I would feel like I would know what I'm doing. And um, I, I think every book, though, is kind of its own thing. And so with every book that I write, I, I'm back at the beginning. And that's kind of where I am right now. I have a book that is actually my 51st that I've turned into my editor and I'm waiting for the editorial letter. And I'm at that point where I'm trying to figure out what I'm writing next and beginning anything. It's kind of that combination of excitement, but also, oh dear, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I, I'm really figuring things out again. And that's one of the fun things about writing is that I'm always figuring things out. Well, I might suggest writing a book about toucans or, you know, have a toucan fly in and make an appearance, something like that, you know? Toucans are always a great subject, I will agree. Well, thanks, that's awesome. So Margaret, as you're thinking about the books that you write and the books that you read, um, I think a lot about how kids, you know, they, they read books, they might read one book, they might not love it, so then they read another book and maybe they would love that one instead. And, you know, books can take us on all kinds of journeys. Can you share a little bit about your thoughts regarding reading and children and reading diverse books in particular? Yeah, yeah, I think it is a great thing to read diverse books. I mean, I think kids need a lot of different books. There's a saying that uh, actually it's someone who is a Buckeye who came up with it. A, a very wonderful woman named Ruth, Rudine Sims Bishop, who was a professor at Ohio State University. I think she is still Professor Emeritus. Um, she had a, 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 a metaphor saying that 
kids need books that are windows and also books that are mirrors. And um, I think when kids read diverse books, books about kids, other kids or other people who are very different from them, um, it, books are functioning as windows that they're seeing into other people's experiences. Um, I think that is a wonderful thing for kids to do. Kids also need books that are mirrors that they can relate to and, and, and say, wait a minute, this character is a lot like me. I totally get this person. Um, and, and I can say as someone who grew up in an area, uh, I, I grew up in rural Ohio and pretty much everybody around me had the same skin color. Pretty much everybody around me was the same religion. Um, and, and there's a lot that's uh, very nice about being around people who are a lot like you, but it was very helpful as well to learn about people who are very different from me as well. And reading a lot of books about diverse cultures and um, diverse religions, it made me want to see more of the world and it, it, it spurred me to do a lot of traveling as an adult. And, and I just feel like my life is so much richer for knowing so many other cultures and uh, other connections to people who aren't just people like me. Of course, I like being around people who are like me too, but um, I think the more kids can understand and empathize with people who are different from them, the better we all are as a society. I agree. And, you know, when you think about the mirror part of it, that's, you know, seeing yourself in a book, it can be so lonely if all the books that you read are about people that aren't like you, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. I think that is true. And and kind of one of the things that I like, I think a lot of times, a, a lot of times people, when they talk about this topic, they, they think, well, if someone has a different skin color or if someone has, is it part of a different religion, that, that that's automatically totally different and, and totally foreign. But I can think of books that I have read about people who are very different from me on the surface. And when I'm reading those books, I'm like, that, that, that's exactly how I feel, that I totally connect with that. So okay. it, it helps people think outside of the box a little bit if they're reading about different experiences. They, then they can also find commonalities, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I always like to invite my interviewees to share a little something. Did you bring a little something to share with us today? I did bring something to share. So I brought something connected to my second oldest book. This is my new second newest book. This is my newest book, Falling Out of Time. But my second newest book is The Secret Letters, which is the first book in a series called The Mysteries of Trash and Treasure. And, and so basically since September, when it came out, I've gotten to go around talking about it a lot. And there was something fun that I got to do every single time I would talk about this book. And um, I'm probably not gonna be doing this as much since it's not my newest book anymore. So I thought I would bring the thing that it was really fun. Um, so in the book, Secret Letters, one of the kids is having to clean out an attic and there's just a bunch of old garbage in the attic. And while he's there, he finds a shoebox <gasps> kind of like this and says, this belongs to Rosemary. Everybody else, keep out. Wow. And I have shown this school box in lots and lots and lots of schools all over the place. And it has been so fun to have kids get to open the shoebox and see what's inside. Oh, my gosh. So, are we going to open it? We are not. Oh, we are not. Because you just have to read the book. That's, you know, I don't want to ruin the book for anybody. I can't wait to, to read the book and see what's in that shoebox. What a great hook. I love that. Well, Margaret, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for your time. I am just, I, I'm in awe of all of your writing. Uh, your books are amazing. So many classics. And I'm so excited that we have so much more Margaret Peterson Haddix to look forward to. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun talking with you. Yay. Well, everyone, you have been listening to Sammy the Interviewing Toucan, reminding you to read local. Bye, Margaret. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>